It's raining, man. Hallelujah, it's raining. Oh, hey, um, the class is over. <laughs> uh, what, what are you, what are you doing in my room? <laughs> oh, what's that? Yeah, um, the, the, the class video is processing. It'll probably take a day or two to get it posted. Um, and then you'll have it to watch. Uh, what's that? Oh yeah, I can I can give you a little uh, a refresher demo of the of the priming right now. Yeah, I'm sure most of you are you know airbrushing your day away, so that would be kind of cool and helpful to have um, while you're airbrushing today. All right, at least until the the main video comes up. All right, yeah. Let me um let me grab my airbrush here and uh, let's get to it. All right, so. Um, let me get these things adjusted here. All right. So we've got our miniatures. We've got our paint. So just to go over that real quick again, I'm using Steinal Res Primer. It's the best in the world. Um, but if you have a different brand of primer, no big deal. Vallejo makes one. There's a bunch of different primers out there. I really like the Steinal Res Primer. It works great. Um, it is pre-thinned. You don't need to thin it at all. I'm going to show you how I actually incorporate my thinner into it a little bit. But, but you do not need to thin your primer. <clears throat> or you shouldn't have to thin your primer. Maybe if it starts getting old. Whatever. Um, we've got white primer. Um, this is the best airbrushing white that I've ever used. Even though it's a primer, I actually use it for white too, so it works out pretty good as well. We've got our thinner. Um, I'm just going to use this very, very sparingly. My thinner is one part isopropyl alcohol, uh, alcohol nine parts distilled water. Um, you could also use, you know, another airbrush ready thinner. Um, doesn't really matter. The magic here is the Liquitex uh, titanium white. Um, and even though this is an opaque color, it I, I've tried it straight over black and it doesn't build up very fast but over white it makes an amazing amazingly bright white so that's what we're going to use for our final highlights um, super simple um, and here we go all right so I'm going to move back in a little bit closer we're going to take a look at these models and we're going to do a few practice sprays and this is where you're going to get your practice on um, do this a lot. Now, obviously, you don't have to practice on every single model. It would take you forever to actually prime anything. Um, but as you're learning, this is a great way of doing it. So do our 10% sprays. Just practice those a little bit. I practice them on my hand all the time. Um, sometimes when I'm spraying and I'm not sure, like maybe I, I did a hard spray, I cleaned out my airbrush, but I'm still like, hey, I wonder if it's actually going to spray right. I'll just hit my finger a little bit. That's my tester. It's right next to my model. I can just go pop, hit there, pop, hit there. So we are going to do some practice sprays. Uh, a perfect spot to practice on is under the armpits because we know those are going to be dark. Um, basically, I'm putting in shadows, but there's nothing stopping you from seeing if you can get a highlight onto the head. It's going to be black, but it still shows you that you can spray paint in certain areas in a, in a precise manner. And precision is what we're looking for, right? So we are going to spray up in the armpits. See that? It made it just a little bit darker. Um, I always do the sides of my models a little darker than the front. So I'm going to do the sides of his legs down here. Hard spray if nothing's coming out. You think something should be coming out, nothing's coming out. This paint is constantly drying in your airbrush. And just a little bit will mess things up royally for you. So I'm doing the insides of the arm, the inside of the body right here, all the way down the side of the leg. Just a little bit darker. Putting in that 10% spray. Maybe I'll do the outside of the arm. Just a little bit. Just seeing if I can do it. Just that little bit of color is perfect. Uh, let's do under the, the chin here. Good. We'll do the other armpit. So you're being very patient. Like I said before, we're slowing down so that we can go faster. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, but it will. It will in a little bit. Oops. I'll do the underside of his club here. That, just like 
that inner side of his arm. Just putting in that little 10% spray. So this might not seem like a whole lot, but think about it. As you're painting a miniature, what if you need to make an area a little bit darker? Like you're almost done with the model and you just need to make it a little darker on the sides. I have just proved that we can do that with primer, <laughs> let alone anything else. And the primer is going to be the hardest thing for you to airbrush. So we'll just keep doing that. I'm noticing my airbrush is now, I'm pulling back and no paint's coming out. So that means I have a micro clog. Bam, bam, hard spray, air only. Okay, notice that. I'm pushing air only and I'm getting paint out. That means there goo there's goop in there. And let me get this open. I'm going to juice that needle a little bit. Notice I'm only pulling it back about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to spin it too. I don't know if that does anything, but I feel like it does. <laughs> Hard spray, air only, no paints coming out. So remember in Airbrush 101, we talked about uh, paint building up on one side of the nozzle or the other, or there's a small micro clog somewhere in the nozzle, and it's keeping the needle from getting all the way forward on your into your nozzle, like closing it off. So when you push that air only, um, the needle's actually pulled back and paint can get out. That's what caused that. So we got that. Boom. We got that on there. I'm going to, oh, lost my arm. I've got an arm off. Um, so sometimes uh, it's beneficial to leave models in sub, sub assemblies. I prefer having the entire model put together for the priming process and stuff. So if you got a model like this that very easily clicks together and kind of can stay together, that's great. Nine times out of ten on armies and stuff, I just glue everything together. It's no big deal. But if you want to leave parts off, that's great. But the parts all need to be put on when you're doing your priming and your initial airbrushing because we need to set our light up exactly the same on every single part. If I got this part over here, I might put highlights right here on the front of it, but the highlights actually needed to be way up here because I didn't have it on the model. So having this thing together is really good. All right, back to the airbrushing. Do a test spray on my finger. I'm just sort of hitting spots with more 10% sprays to see what they look like. I'm creating contrast. Um, and this is, a, this is a value contrast. So values are anything that's like super light, like white would be a value of 1. And anything that's super dark would be black, which would be like a value of 10. So I'm, I'm making darker values next to lighter values that create, that help us see the shape a lot better. If you want an example of that, got some models here, some demo airbrush models. So this this is an example of very very low contrast. So uh, he's pretty much gray. It goes from black to gray. So there's not a whole lot dif not a whole lot of differential there with color. Um, here's one where uh, this is how I normally airbrush a mini. So you've got areas that are extremely dark. You've got areas that are extremely light, and then there's areas in between where it starts turning to gray. And I can see everything really well. Like that model pops a lot more than this. This model looks a lot flatter. So our contrast has given us a lot of shape and body to the miniature and a lot of interest. So um, that's something. Here's even more contrast. So some people like to airbrush, you know, have uh, really bright up on top, really dark down below. I used to do it this way too, but then I just found that I preferred this style better. This is all your own personal preference. See the back too? Much darker down here, much brighter up there. It's just a... Uh, uh, a starker contrast, I guess, is what you could call it. So this one's up to you. You do whatever you want. Um, you see with this um, Atac, his his uh, clothing, like that's a really good contrast between the light and the dark. The, the play between light and dark is really good. It's really pretty, and it's really interesting. So that's something you want to remember. Now, some of this contrast is very subtle. Like you don't need completely black to completely white. Um, it's very subtle and that's where the 10% sprays come in. So we just keep hitting these. I'll keep doing hard sprays. You're going to find it just keeps 
clogging over and over. I'll check my my dry tip. Um, let's spray up a little bit more in here. I'm gonna do under his uh, his little pec muscles there because this dude's ripped, man. Another thing I'm looking for is can I hit areas with this black primer and my overspray is not too much. That's what I'm really, really trying to do. So not having to mask off areas of the model is a huge plus. So if I can hit like in here in his belt, but not hit the uh, his, uh, his little fur clothing like skirt or whatever the heck this is if I can hit in there real dark not hit the fur not hit the skin perfect that's what I'm looking for like this like that I'm gonna do the sides of his body a little bit darker you see uh, that jumped pretty quickly and I would call that a mistake but it's not that big of a mistake. I wanted the side of that body to be darker anyways. But what happened was, is that my micro clog was getting so much, I was pulling back further and further on my airbrush, and then all of a sudden it exploded out. Now, that explosion was not very big. So, you know, not too big of a deal. And you'll find when you're spraying controlled, you're not gonna have too many horrible, horrible accidents. You're not gonna have that. That's not gonna happen. But guess what, if it does, who cares? Because you're gonna paint over it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter um, because it's all gonna be black anyways. Uh, other good places to practice. So I'm gonna try to hit the backside of this hand with a darker color, with this black, without hitting the shield. So um, let's do a hard spray. Anytime you have to do something, get in close and dirty, do a hard spray. Um, if that doesn't work, you're gonna to wanna to clean your airbrush completely. But let's see if I can't get right behind that hand without hitting his shield. You see that? That's a that's a pretty good shadow right there. Hit the underside of this of his club here. Without hitting too much on top of his body. Now you may also notice I don't just do like just straight circles. Sometimes I do move a little bit like that. But I've learned to control my spray. I've learned to control that dot, and now I can I can control that all the way along that spray. So do that. Do under this arm, under that arm, there, and here. So when you're practicing, I want you to do 10%, 10%, 10%, come back, do 20%, 30%. But when you're when you're actually in a workflow situation and you're like, hey man, I got this, I'm good, I've got some real good control on my airbrush, start motoring through it. You can do one, two, three, four, five. Like I know that these shadows are gonna be quite a bit darker. So I'm just gonna boom, 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 boom. But I won't go to as dark as I think they need to be. I'm just gonna go to a point, maybe, Maybe 30%, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Get inside there, maybe get these, uh, use your angles to your advantage, hitting those skulls right there. I'm gonna hit the palm of this hand a little bit darker, maybe right next to his thumb. Look at that precision. Oh, man, it's lovely. I get really excited when I start seeing this stuff because it's just freaking awesome. Um, okay, so his shield. Let's just say when you paint in this thing, boom, you paint this shield, all silver, no shadows, no highlights, nothing. Or maybe you put a highlight on it, but you don't even put a shadow. Um, now, hit this again, because we're gonna go precision. Do a little scratch off of the nozzle. I think our nozzle is doing pretty good. We're not dry tipping too bad today. Real light. Try not to hit the elbow. Even though the elbow is gonna be shadowed a little bit, I wanna have I want to have enough control. I just want to see if I got control. Can I hit the shield without hitting the elbow? Maybe when I'm done painting this thing, the elbow's perfect, and I just have the shield to paint. So, in there, and maybe, I know my light source is coming this way, so maybe the light's going to be right up there, so I want my shadow to be right across from it. So I'm going to push that shadow a little bit darker. There. I think that looks awesome. Really, really cool. All right, we're going to hit, hit some of these other shadows again. Now we're gonna start insisting on shadow. No paint was coming out, so once again, I'm hitting that hard spray. 
Checking on my finger, boom. I like that. I think that looks good. Now, uh, we go back. We've been doing all focus sprays right here. We're going to do a blending spray now. So I'm going to pull my airbrush from being really close to further back, four to six inches back. Here's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, I got a speckle right there. Good golly. Um, I'm trying to hit the bottom of his back and put a light mist of black all the way up his back. So I'm trying to do this. Something like that. See that? Fine mist, but all the way up. Maybe darker down by his, uh, by his, the bottom of his back and lighter at the top. But that being said, I'm going to go back here. I don't want to hit, I don't want to hit his, uh, his clothing there. So I'm just going to put my thumb over. That's my first mask. Hit a spray onto my hand so I can see it. And now I'm also going to want to come from an extreme angle. So maybe my mask can roll down. See how it's showing most up here, but when it's like this, my airbrush can't see those parts. So I can just. There. So I just shaded his back just a little bit. See how that works? All right, let's take a smaller model. And the reason I grabbed a smaller model for this class is because I don't want you to be scared of smaller models. It doesn't matter how big the model is. People airbrush their thumbnails. Like, I mean, you can airbrush very, very tiny things. And you can get really small dots, even from your general purpose airbrush. So I've got the general purpose needle in here in my, in my uh, Vex. Uh, and the reason why I don't ever switch this one out is because I can make a dot that big. Look at how big that dot is compared to this guy. That would put an OSO glow on his eyes. Like that's how small that dot is. And so I don't think, I don't believe I need a smaller dot than that. Um, if you want a smaller dot, you're gonna have to grab your uh, detail brush, but you're not gonna be spraying, you're not gonna be doing primer like this with a detail brush. So that that is the major difference. All right, so I'm gonna do a hard spray, blow that out. Uh, let's see, I wanna do the sides of his head. Just a little bit. And notice I kind of moved the model to get the spot. So this is a shadow, but I sprayed from above a little bit so I could spray down in this crack. If I just sprayed from below, I'm missing all that and actually where the shadow areas are, and there's now a highlight, which I don't want. So I'm gonna do that again. And here's where also um, reading glasses or something like that comes in pretty good uh, because you're gonna need to get in up close and personal with this. You, don't, you definitely don't wanna be spraying blind. All right, went a little bit in his, maybe in his armpits up here. Just like that. Do the other side. I'm going to do a little bit on his shield, the, the his front armor right there. Uh, I'm going to spray a little bit from below on his antlers. And then I want his shield to be like this. Again, I'm kind of doing that spray all the way up the side, and then I'm gonna do more sprays at the bottom of the shield. It's a little bit darker. I'm gonna spray a little bit into his eyes from below. See how everything, you're starting to see it a little bit better. It's, it's subtle, but I just want you to be get really, really comfortable with airbrushing small amounts and getting big results. Um, no matter how subtle those big results are, these are these are big results because you're you're subtly changing colors. So this is what I like about the putty pad, puddle pad. I'm gonna just do my heart spray right on there. All right, so we'll do this side. I'm gonna do. Armpits over here and run that down. Maybe we'll spray the underside of that armor right there. There we go. 
side of that tongue. Here we have it. It's kind of getting all that stuff in. Maybe I want the side of his nose to be a little bit darker than the other side. So our light source is coming down like that. See that? It's just things start showing up better. It's really, really amazing. And just practice. He's got a little ball on the top of his uh, staff here. So what if I want to, I just want to see if, um, if uh, I can get a shadow on that. So I'll spray a little shadow on the back side of his staff over here to match my light sources. And then up on that ball, see if we can do it. Let's see. Yep, without hitting anything else. Perfect. It hit other areas, but there's so little paint going on, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So this is where your control really starts coming in. Good. Right on the bottom of that hand, give it some shape. Let's do the bottom of the shield again. Perfect. Okay, so going back to our ogre. So you want to do, you want to, you're, you're painting this guy and you know when you're doing faces and sometimes they're, you know, they always call the apple of the cheek is a little bit red. Um, and so uh, that has always been the bane of my existence, getting that little bit of red, that little bit of peachy color into the cheeks without, you know, leaving marks. And, and you know, if I thin down the paint too much, it's, it'll leave little pool marks around it. And it just never works out. So what if you could airbrush that in? And so my question to myself is, can I airbrush right under that cheekbone some black? So this one, I definitely want to make sure that I've got precision. Just a little bit of paint, I'm good. And now I'm gonna go in. Spray just in that cheek, just a little bit. Can you spray a little bit more? So the first spray I missed a little bit high, and that's the thing. Everyone thinks that you have to be perfect on every single little spray. Um, I missed a little bit high, but it put so little paint down, I saw that I was a little bit high, I moved back and I hit that cheek perfectly. So these are the things you can do with your airbrush. This is how precise you can get with your airbrush. Wonder if I could darken the little leather strap around his neck. These muscles up here, let's do these muscles right here. You see where I'm going with this? The ramifications of this are insane. Like you can do so much with your airbrush. Uh, you can make your model so much better. And in very little time at all. It just takes the time to learn it. And that's what you're doing right here. So uh, there we go. All right. So like I said, you accidentally spray too much paint right there. That is a major mess up. That is like, oh, that's bad. Uh, if this model was painted, you're really screwed right now. But we're airbrushing, or we're, we're doing the primer, so we'll just finish off these models and paint them all black. All right, so when I'm doing the, when I'm doing the priming, I usually do half the model at once. So I spray more paint. I don't do the 10% sprays. I spray a little bit more, but I'm also doing controlled spurts so that it goes, I'm seeing where it's going. And with the black primer, I'm spraying from all different angles. Like this, because I want it to get into every nook and cranny. And I just hold the model by the top, spray the bottom half. It's pretty easy. Some models this is a little harder to do on, but um, you know you could use uh, one of those GW holders or a cork or something to hold your model, and then you'd be able to spray the whole thing. But I find that this works really well. Spray it like this. I got the bottom half uh, done. That arm keeps falling off. Why didn't I glue it? What is wrong with me? 
get that, and then I go to my next model. So if you're doing production, if you're a commission painter and you're doing a whole bunch of these and you got to airbrush them all, um, first off, I'd probably airbrush outside and with a rattle can because that's much quicker. But models like these Bones models tend to have problems with rattle can primers. They turn super sticky. So you gotta you got to um, hit them with the airbrush. So in that case, you see I'm going pretty quick. And right here, that 40 PSI really helps out too because I've noticed in the past at 20 PSI, your paint's not going to get into all these nooks and crannies. It's just not. And then you're going to have to come back with a paintbrush and paint it all up. So um, that's always bad. Uh, and it just takes forever and it's discouraging and all that good stuff. So I'm going to hit from more angles now. Got that. I'll come back to this model. It's uh, pretty dry, almost all the way dry. If you're doing a whole bunch of models, they're definitely dry. You can always airbrush them in between. Spray that all together, and uh, you're good to go. All right, we're done with our black, and now we are on to our Steinol Res White. That's a hard word to say, Steinol Res White. So. I'm going to do something different on these guys. <clears throat> now I said don't thin them, but you can kind of grease the wheels a little bit. So a lot of times with my primers, I will put a drop, maybe two drops at the most, of my thinning solution in there. So that is our one part isopropyl alcohol, ten parts, nine parts distilled water. Shake up my paint real good. And I'm going to pour this right on top, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to mix it up. Nothing. Get all that in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is spray the, the thinner out. It's also got some of that some of that black from before, but now it's white. There we go. All right. So that just kind of gives, it kind of gets the wheels in motion. Um, I don't know if it really does anything at all, but I do that a lot, um, just especially with my white, um, just to get it <clears throat> spraying good. All right. So for this, we are going to go from a 45 degree angle all the way around the top of the model. So our spray angles are very important here. Um, our first spray is going to be 360 degrees all the way around, pretty much even. We're going to put a 10, 20% spray down. Uh, this guy has a lot of skin on him. And I find that if you keep it very contrasty, like if you take this model right here, um, I left it very, very dark, you know, compared Compared to my normal prime, which is lighter, this one, the, the dark shades are much darker. And this for me would be bad because uh, when I put my skin color over that, it's too dark. I think it's too dark. So with a mo uh, on a model where I have a lot of skin showing or even just the face, um, I will spray my first spray from below. So just like a shadow, but I'm going to be putting down literally 10% white. So it will look like a dark gray. And I'll put that all the way around on all of the skin tones of this model. And that will give me, uh, that, will, that will bring up that darkness a little bit just in the skin. And then I can spray it as normal. So let's do that right now. I'm also not as close. I'm a little bit further back. See that? Just a little bit of color going down. Now you may find this is a this is a preference thing. You may find that you do this on every mini. Like you don't want it to be super dark. But I think having the shadows darker um, is better in the long run. Except for skin. <laughs> so we'll put that on like that. I'll do a little bit right there. I'm gonna spray from below over here. In this hand, right there, his feet. It's very quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now he's ready to go. And uh, we'll let him sit there and, and sort of dry off a little bit. Uh, you'll also notice with my 10% sprays, the paint's almost never wet. You never have a wet layer of paint on. Um, so it dries very quickly. So I'm going to do 10, 20% right there. I'll do it all the way around the model. Again, I'm pretty far away from the model. Four to six inches, six to eight inches, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You don't want to be so far away that the paint all dries before it gets there because you'll get sort of fuzzy paint. Put it on like that. There you go. Super quick, super easy.
You notice I didn't go from below on this guy. He's, he doesn't have any skin showing. A little bit on his hand, but who cares? All right, so now we're going to do it on our ogre. Same thing. 45 degree angle from the top. You want to make decisions. Do I want the top of the model to be, or the bottom of the model to be as bright as the top? In that case, you want to keep these sprays even. But on the bottom of this model, I actually want the feet to get a little bit darker than the top. I want to pull your attention up here. So maybe I hit the, the top of the model a few more times. Maybe that barrel is interesting. But the feet, I'm going to leave sort of dark gray. I'm going to spray, change my angle a little bit so I can spray down here in the bottom of this leg. I like that. Let's do the back. And remember, it's not the end of the world if you accidentally spray too hard and you get a blotch of white somewhere. This is all going to be covered up. This is just your roadmap to see how to paint the model in the future. So, also, you're learning precision. And we're doing it with a white primer, which is amazing. All right, so you see the front is a little bit lighter than the back. I'm going to hit it a couple more times. Again, I'm spraying in a motion that, that always goes off the miniature. But if I need one little spot, like maybe that shield, I just stop and hit it a couple times. There we go. Also, relatively no speckles. Very cool. Now, the time you will see speckles, if you spray like this, and then you go to spray again, you'll get speckles. You'll get those little bitty speckles. They'll be all over the place. So the longer you hold the, the paint, the trigger back with your paint coming out, um, the more stuff builds up on your on your needle. So we've sprayed a little bit of white. I'm going to take the tip off of my airbrush and clean the needle with the pads of my fingers because I know there's no way that it's not building up some paint there. So do that. Do a tester. Got it. So now we do our second round. Um, same thing, 360. We're just putting more white paint on. Maybe we start insisting a little bit in areas where we want it to be lighter, like light source. So in this one, my light source will be coming from this side because he's looking that way. That's the only reason. Uh, this guy, his light source, I think would look cool coming from this side because he got a shield in the way. I don't want a big old shadow over here. I just think it's appropriate that's on this side. Uh, if you want it from the top, then you'll spray from the top down. But you see here, I'm already building up that color very slowly. I'm doing it even slower for teaching purposes because I'm talking like a banshee. Um, but I'm just kind of go like that, kind of go like this. Down. A little bit more there. That's our second layer. Let's do our second layer on this guy. Again, all the way around. So 45 degree angle. Now here's where I change it up. On his shield. Uh, I think if, if the light was coming from here, it would only shine on the far corner of the shield. It would look really weird. So I'm going to break some rules here just to make it look cool. And I'm going to spray my light going light here to dark over here. So I'm going to put some more of that white highlight, but, get, but more in the front than the back. See, the back is like darker like that. Now, the good thing is, remember, we practiced on this shield before. And... Um, I, I made a shadow on this back side. I even shaded the, the eye sockets. If you for some reason lose those shadows, you know for a fact that you can put them right back in. And that is the beauty of practicing when you prime. I'm gonna put a little bit more right here. Right on this side. And maybe I know my light source is here. I think on the back, the light source is going to be on the same side. So I'm going to insist just a little bit more, a few more sprays on that side of the model. Even on the head, notice the head's brighter on this side than that side. It's just a little bit, but it is there. And that's important, I think. Really sell the effect. All right. So we got that. I'm going to spray a little bit more on this side. And we're set with that. So now come back to this guy. 
Uh, everything's really dried on him, so we know that uh, thing, the colors are exactly as they appear. So now we're going to raise our value. And what is value? That is the lightness or darkness of the model. So we want to get closer to 100% white. But instead of doing it all the way around, I'm going to do it in my light source area. So that would be his head, the upper shoulder there. And I think he's got such a big belly. Some of his belly, I think, would get some of it. And some of this, some of that, like I said, that uh, this little barrel there is interesting. Maybe a little bit on his hand, a little bit on that right up there on his club. Very cool. Do the backside as well. Backside I always make a little bit darker than the front because it's the back. It's going to be lit. It's got to have that secondary light source. Um, think of it this way. When you're looking at it on the front, He's lit like that. When he turns around, he just turned around physically, and now he's lit by the same light source. So um, if you think of it that way, it's much easier. But you see, now we're getting very good contrast between our shadows, our midtones, highlights, all that stuff is looking really, really good. I'm going to do a second uh, insisting on color on this guy. You also notice when I insist on the color, a lot of times my airbrush starts creeping in closer to you. Because I want it, I want it to only hit one spot or a small pocket. My paint wasn't coming out the way I thought it should, so I did a hard spray. Now it's coming out perfectly. Do that side, just like that. Awesome. All right, so let's switch out colors. Um, don't ever throw your primer away. This stuff is, I mean, it seems like you got a lot and then it runs out really quick, especially if you paint a lot. This stuff is like gold. So um, I always put it back in. This off. Spray it out. We're going to do this. I'm going to spray it in until that water comes out relatively clear or kind of clear, milky. Hold it back from the bottle, and I'm watching my stream also to make sure that that looks good, nice and strong. I'm impatient, so I'm going to dump out the cup. There we go. So remember uh, in Airbrush 101, I told you that the only thing that was important, uh, the only thing that mattered for your water or your paint flow um, was the nozzle. You keep that nozzle clean and you will not have a problem spraying. So I've been doing precision sprays and stuff here. I want you to look, let's let's move in a little bit. I want you to look inside of my cup here. So other than uh, some little bitty bubbles right there, look at that. <laughs> I accidentally left my primer in the cup um, there's a little hole right there that's letting my primer go down into the airbrush. And I've been doing this entire video with a, with a cup that's almost clogged completely over um, by dried primer. I'm definitely cleaning this out after this video. But I just wanted you to know how dirty my, the inside of my cup was. And it was not affecting my airbrush at all. It was not as affecting my spray at all. Well, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you leave primer in there and it really messes things up. But it was still wet inside. It hadn't dried all the way. So it was just dried on the top of it. And it's created like this little a little land bridge of, uh, of primer there. So anyways, if that, if that doesn't prove it to you, I don't know what would. Juice my needle a little bit. Boom, 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 like that. All right, so now we're gonna switch to inks. And normally with inks, uh, I always tell people, when you're using inks, use them in your detail airbrush. But my Vex is technically a detail airbrush. It's a, it's a dirty detail airbrush now, but it is definitely a detail airbrush. And even with the general purpose needle in it, I get detail results. So, open this up. Thing I love about inks is they have the little dropper on them. 
I'm going to put three drops in. One, two, three. I always only put three drops in. I don't know. It just seems like that works out really well. All right. So you got to be careful with hard sprays on this. This is like literally like airbrushing water. So you don't want to thin it. All right. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do a test spray on my thumbnail here. So there's a little spray right there. Looks good. Now I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Now you can do this really wide spray, but I think it's more effective if it's in very small areas. So we're going to go only where that light source was. So the last place we insisted on um, the Steiner Res White, we're going to actually go into a smaller space than that. So I'm going to come in real close. You see that color change a little bit? It's just brighter. Holy cow. Look at that brightness compared to this one. It's just amazingly bright. Now, that doesn't happen if you go straight over black. Uh, the, even though this is an opaque ink, it just doesn't have the punch. It doesn't have the opacity that, like, your Steiner as well. So I, like, because, oh my gosh, I'm always doing things the easiest way. If I could... I would skip the Steiner Res, but the Steiner Res goes down good, it covers really good, it's very opaque, and then I come back in with this, and I do little bitty sprays, little bit of white to bump that up. I think I want his other shoulder to have a little bit of a highlight on it, so this is where those precision sprays comes in again, because I can put it right on the edge of that shoulder, just like that. I like that. I think it looks awesome. Uh, another area, maybe his hand is interesting. So let's put a little bit of a highlight down on the hand. And again with this one, you want to keep that angle really, really high coming down. Don't ever go, you know, 45 degrees if you, if at all possible. I mean, I know sometimes you got to get in there and, and hit an area. So like maybe on his knee or in his leg. I want it a little bit more highlighted. I would have to come in from 45. I'm trying to just hit the top of that knee. Yeah, just a little bit. So the thing I really want you all to practice on with this is just going in. You can always paint them black again. In fact, I kind of want you to do this two or three times. Go in and start picking things out. See what looks good. See what doesn't. You know, would it look better if that muscle right there was a little bit more highlighted? I don't know. Let's see if it does. So let's come in. Now remember, with this ink, you're pulling back barely at all because it's <laughs> it comes out really fast if you don't. Um, let's let's do a sample here. That's what it looks like if you if you hit it too hard. It's just it's and that was barely pulling back at all. Um, okay, on this guy, I'm gonna do a little bit on his shield right at the top where my where I want my light source. Again, our light source was over here and at a 45, so it would be here and at a 45. Same thing on his tongue. Two or three little sprays, very light, but it builds up very quickly. Helmet. Top of this thing, maybe a little bit on the other one, just a little bit. The front of that armor thing, the front of his shoulder. And then we're going to go back here, same thing, top of the helmet, top of that metal thing right there, top of his shoulder, and the top of his weapon. And there you go. That's how you prime. And you've practiced. Be thinking in your mind. I know some of you are, are new to this and you, and you just, uh, you're just running scared right now. <laughs> Other of you, others of you have been airbrushing for a while and I'm giving you a new technique or a new way of manipulating your paint. And you're already thinking like, oh my gosh, okay, if I put the skin tone on, I could put a shadow right in there. I could do it at any time during the paint process, yada, yada, yada. So um, if you're new to this, I just want you to experiment, like what about, okay, so what about this skull right here? Let's try to hit that skull with my airbrush. I'm coming in, I'm guessing where it's, where the light's gonna, where it's gonna hit. I guessed perfect, hit the top of that skull. It's just amazing. Very cool. This. 
This has changed the way I paint completely. It's made it so I'm not scared, and it's made it so I know that, you know, if I make a mistake, I can come back, I can fix it with my airbrush, I can smooth things out, I can do whatever I want. So, uh, I want you to practice this like a crazy person this week. Uh, <laughs> 10% sprays. I want every piece of paper in your house to be covered in dots. I want your hands to be covered in dots. I want your loved ones to be covered in dots. Uh, I want you to prime as many models as you can because next week when we do Airbrush 103, we are going to be learning how to paintbrush and airbrush at the same time. And you are going to need some... Uh, you're going to need some precision here. So that being said, uh, get on it. And, um, and hey, the Airbrush 102 video is going to be up in a day or two. And you'll have the entire, the entire seminar. So uh, until then, just keep practicing. All right. All right. I'm going to go eat dinner. So you got to leave. Thanks again for taking my class. I hope that this helps you and I hope that you practice because the people who are practicing are getting results. Check the Discord. Yeah, post in Discord too because uh, every morning I answer a whole lot of questions. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's working out really well. All right, see you next week.